The unfathomable riches of Christ. Well, <laughs> I'm celebrating my uh, double five, 55th birthday. And the Holy Spirit impressed upon me that, you know, I must just share with you the, the I call it the trilogy, the three things, trilogy, that govern the structure of my life. The unfathomable riches of Christ, the throne of God, the seven spirits of God. Now, the riches of Christ I'm about to share with you are so vast and immeasurable that they can be grasped by the human mind in the absence of the revelation of the Holy Spirit. It's got, we've got, let's get this right up front. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, if you are not a son of God, Greek word, real son, exact representation, male and female, you're not going to grasp what I'm talking about. These riches of Christ are so vast, they are immeasurable. Now, even if every one of the 100 billion neurons in the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, and the that is 100 billion atoms in each neuron, if they were all fully firing in the absence of the revelation of the Spirit of God, these unfathomable riches of Christ will still be beyond the grasp of that active human mind. So when you hit a block in your thinking as you process this material, just ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom, revelation, and understanding. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ promised us. When he, in John 16, but when he, the Spirit of truth comes, that's the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose it to you, to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take off mine and will disclose it to you. All things the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he takes off mine and will disclose it to you. John 16, 13, 15, everything that the Father has belongs to Christ and the Holy Spirit discloses this to us. Now, just for clarity, you are a son of God. Greek word, uhios, U-H-I-O-S. Exact representation, male or female. You are a son of God in Christ, so you have the Holy Spirit. You are in him and he's in you. If you don't know him personally and intimately, then it's, this is the best time to start building the relationship. And, and as Paul says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to us, you and me, a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of our heart, our inner being, our spirit, our soul, everything within us may be enlightened so that we will know what is the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. That's Ephesians 1, 70 to 90. Now, Paul introduces us to this concept, the one part of my trilogy, the unfathomable riches of Christ. And he says, to me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles, that's the whole world, that's you and I, the unfathomable riches of Christ, the unfathomable riches of Christ. That's in Ephesians 3, uh, 8. The word unfathomable is used in the Bible means something to be searched out, investigated, inquire about, as far as even up to and until as far as space in degree and in time. And in the other, uh, one of the, the three trilogy, I talk about deep outer space when I'm talking about uh, the riches of Christ. So have a look at the link and you understand to the depth that you need to go. And God is talking about unfathomable. It also means a thing that cannot be traced out. It's so vast, so deep, so wide. It really can't be traced out. The thing exists, but there's no end to it. The unfathomable riches of Christ. The thing exists, but there is no end to it. Even if you invested all the time you have and went out into deep outer space in search of it, you will never exhaust it. The Greek word that is used in the New Testament for riches is the word plutos, P-L-O-U-T-O-S, which means riches and wealth. So we're not talking about some, some wishy-washy thing that's A, that's not tangible. We're talking of tangible stuff, riches and wealth of external possessions. In other words, visible and tangible riches and wealth and not some theoretical conception of wealth. So at this point, at this very point, it is at this point that the wisdom of God separates itself from the wisdom of the world. 
the wisdom of the world is, is all of this stuff, self-motivation, self-actualization, purpose-driven life, human philosophy, motivational speaking, all of that stuff that separates itself uh, from the wisdom of God. Because to the world, to that world, when you talk of riches, we're just talking about material acquisitions. But to sons of God, material riches are only at best just one of the seven things that comprise the unfathomable riches of Christ. And what are those seven things? Well, the full, unfathomable, unsearchable, tangible riches of Christ that actually exist are described for us in Revelation 5, 12. At least for me, that's, 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 these are the components of the unfathomable riches of Christ, of the Plutus the, of Christ. Revelation 5, 12. <laughs> if you never heard of it, here are the seven elements that make up the unfathomable riches of Christ. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, might, honor, glory, blessing. Revelation 5, 12. Here are the seven things that make up these unfathomable riches of Christ. Worthy is the lamb. Christ received so we have received this because we are in the lamb. The lamb is in us. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, might, honor, glory, blessing. Number one, power. Number two, riches. Number three, wisdom. Number four, might. Number five, honor. Number six, glory. Number seven, blessing. The sequence doesn't matter, but these, that, these are the, this is the fullness of the riches of Christ. These seven things for me are the, among the best descriptors. And as a coach, when I'm coaching my clients, I describe the unfathomable riches of Christ as these things. They are the best descriptors of the complete substance of these unfathomable riches in Christ. Our inheritance in Christ as sons of God, power, riches, and in that riches description of the seven, we talk about wealth, not tangible wealth, but it's just one of the seven power, riches, wisdom, might, honor, glory, and blessing. This is the complete package of our inheritance and everything is ours. Now, the Holy Spirit has given me a revelation of the scale of this, of this seven exactly so we can, we can try and put an, our minds around what unfathomable means. And that by, he provided me insight. Okay, let me... <laughs> In my words, the Holy Spirit has given me a revelation of the scale of this seven that provides insight into the scale of the complete package of the unfathomable riches that belong to Christ and belong to us. About eight months after my wife, Mapule, and I finished our 40 days and 40 nights, 24 7 only water only fast for 40 days and 40 nights, the Holy Spirit released the prophetic word of revelation to me that. This is what he said to me. One shovel full of resources from an undiscovered planet in an undiscovered galaxy could pay for the whole of Earth if you could value it. Now, this is, if this is the first time you have heard me say this transformational metamorphosis prophetic word, I strongly suggest you complete listen to the trilogy. Trilogy, because one of them, one that I've called the seven spirits of God, the Holy Spirit, how he values earth, describes in detail this prophetic word. One shovel full of resources from an undiscovered planet in an undiscovered galaxy could pay for the whole earth uh, if, if you could look at it. And in that video, I described the prophetic word in greater detail. I mean, a quick look uh, uh, on, the, on the NASA website and a quick uh, study of, of the things I caught in that trilogy will reveal that there are over 2 trillion galaxies that have been presently described in what they call the observable, observable universe. There's much more. And just one shovel full of resources from there could buy the whole of Earth. I mean, this scale, this scale that the Holy Spirit revealed to me, one shovel full of resources from an undiscovered planet in an undiscovered galaxy could pay for the whole Earth if you could value it is applicable to all the seven descriptors of the unfathomable riches of Christ. Same scale, which means it's beyond our measure. Let me, let me here's the prophetic word again, and go, go, go listen to the other trilogy. One shovel full of resources from an undiscovered planet in an undiscovered galaxy could pay for the whole earth if you could value it. 
Now that, that's just one chapter for the rest of it is, is the riches of Christ in terms of in, in, in applicable to power, to riches, to wisdom, to might, to honor, to glory and blessing. And they are all ours in their fullest measure. If the veil over our minds is removed and we grasp the scale of who we are and what we have in Christ, we will never walk in any human imposed limitation again. It doesn't matter who you are, the color of your skin, the, the language that you speak, the way that you walk, it's irrelevant. We are in Christ. If we grasp who we are, our lives will change. We will never be limited again. This scale, one shovel full of resources from an undiscovered planet in an undiscovered galaxy could pay for the whole earth if you could value it, is what Paul describes as unfathomable, the unfathomable riches of Christ. And remember, the full riches of Christ is those seven, seven scriptures that I've just mentioned for you. Power, riches, wealth, tangible wealth, wisdom, might, honor, glory, blessing. Those are the full unfathomable riches of Christ. The only block is our lack of knowledge. You know, God has done it, and all we have to do is walk through it. God has prepared for us from before he made the world, before creation, he prepared for us everything we would ever need for life on this earth. And the reason we are not experiencing it is because we don't ask him for wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of who we are. He says it right here in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of God, I also will forget your children. Hosea 4, verse 6. In Isaiah 5, 13, therefore my people go into exile for their lack of knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude is parched with thirst. That's Isaiah 5, 13. Now there is a place called the throne of God where Jesus Christ, the risen and ascended Christ, is seated and rules as king of kings, as kings of all the earth. It's in the Bible, and listen to the revelation that Christ Jesus gave to John. Revelation 1, 4 to 6, John, this is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking, to the seven churches that are in Asia. So, so John, John is now sharing the revelation. Grace to you and peace, this is what you saw. And from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood, and he has made us to be a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. We are on the throne of God with God our Father, who is, who was, who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits of and the seven spirits of God, that's the Holy Spirit. And with Christ Jesus, the Son of God, we are in Him and He is in us. It is from this place, the throne of God, that I'm speaking to you from, and that I'm inviting you into. And as, as the place where we can have this dialogue. And from where you can have the understanding, wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of these unfathomable riches of Christ. And if, if the, the truth that we are, the throne of God, is something that you've heard for the first time, then go to the other part of the trilogy. Remember, the trilogy is the unfathomable riches of Christ, the seven spirits of God, the Holy Spirit, and the throne of God. So I am speaking to you from who I am, the throne of God, in the city of God, the heaven in Jerusalem. And that's where I want to have a dialogue with you. So if you're not a son of God, male or female in Christ, this is, you won't grasp this. If you haven't yet read or listened to the trilogy, please go ahead and click on the link or the link is in the notes. Now, the unfathomable, unfathomable riches of Christ are not riches that you can visualize, visualize yourself in. Forget about visualization, all of this stuff. I mean, I'm a coach. I'm trained by the best of them. I know all of that stuff. These unfathomable riches of Christ are not accessible through visualization. And you can run a series, series of affirmations uh, to access them. There is absolutely nothing 
that human philosophy, human motivation, self-actualization has or can ever come up with that will ever equip you and enable you to access and experience these riches. If your starting point is any form of human wisdom, you might, you might as well save yourself the energy and stop right here. That's right, switch off the video and go work on your visualization and affirmation. This is the spirit of God that reveals these things to us. This is the word of God, the living word of God. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to instruct you in these matters. And he's right here with you and in you and you are in him and is very responsive to any question you may ask him. It is the Holy Spirit, not the wisdom of this world, who will lead you into the fresh depths of God, the revelation of the, of the word of God, Christ Jesus, and these unfathomable riches of, of Christ. Paul put it this way. Now, we, have to dis, we have to consciously separate ourselves from the foolishness of the wisdom of the world. Paul says, when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling and my mess and trembling and my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Yet we do speak wisdom. My preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, motivational speaking, philosophy, self-actualization, visualization, affirmation, would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature, a wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away, passing away. but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of men, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us, God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. There are depths of God beyond where you are. You know, the Holy Spirit said to me once that everything that you've experienced up to now is, now is just a stepping stone. There are depths to God. Let me lead you into them. For who, are, who among men knows the thoughts of men except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. There's no way to access the, the, the thoughts of God without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now we have received, Paul says, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the spirit for they are foolishness to him and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. A natural man is someone who functions out of their soul. You can be saved and still function out of your soul pursuing all this human wisdom. But as sons of God, we must put that aside and operate as spiritual men, people of the spirit led by the Holy Spirit and uh, by the word of God. So Paul says, things which you also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit, we are taught by the spirit of God, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man operating out of the human soul, no matter how highly developed the soul powers are, does not accept the things of the spirit of God for their foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual, that's us, who operate out of the spirit, we are in spirit, Christ is in us, we are in him, appraise all things that he himself is appraised by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that will instruct him, my favorite part, but we have the mind of Christ. That's 1 Corinthians 2, 1 to 16. The mind of Christ is a great equalizer. 
doesn't matter who you are. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God, who died, was buried, resurrected by the Holy Spirit, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father with the seven spirits of God as your Lord and Savior, then you have the mind of Christ because you are a son of God. Christ is in you. You are in Christ. You have access to the mind of God. If you then, and you are one with the mind of God, if you then by your conscious choice and free will live your life submitted to the leadership of the Holy Spirit under the commands of the word of God, then you have the mind of Christ, the mind of God, the mind of the Father, the mind of the Holy Spirit. We have the mind of Christ and we have the seven spirits of God that rested on Christ, fully functional. That's the Holy Spirit that is within us. The mind of Christ gives you the ability to relate directly with the Holy Spirit with no need for any person running interference for you. Now, question, George, fantastic. How do you access the unfathomable riches of Christ. The only way, and please hear me carefully, that you, you, you can and you only ever have access to these unfathomable riches of Christ is through the spirit of God and the mind of Christ because we are in Christ, the word of God. There is no other way. The only way into these riches is being processed by the Holy Spirit through what I call the mind of Christ, crucible and furnace. I'm a coach. <laughs> I have to correct guys so many times. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a theologian. I'm just a craftsman of the word of God. I'm a, I'm a coach, and my coaching paradigm is the mind of Christ, crucible, and fairness. So the only way for you to, to, to become fully functional on the things of God, be, allow yourself to be processed by the Holy Spirit through the mind of Christ, crucible, and fairness furnace so that you can fully function as a son of God, son again, Greek word, uhios, male or female, we are exact representations on the throne of God. Through the mind of Christ, crucible and fairness, our soul, our mind and heart become attuned to the reality that is in our spirit of operating from, in, through, by, and the throne of God. The veil, this veil that is our flesh is destroyed as we enter beyond the veil and we start to see ourselves as we really are spirit beings in Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God and the commands of the living word of God with our feet firmly planted on the earth. Please be reminded again that the unfathomable riches of Christ is not just wealth. That's one element of it. They are power riches, wisdom, might, honor, glory, blessing to the fullest scale of it. That is all our riches. Now, if you really want, if you want to access this, if you really want wisdom, revelation, knowledge of this, then I invite you, just go through a self-coaching process. Enter the mind of Christ, crucible and fairness. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you into fresh depths in God and you will come to understand who you are and what you have and what you can function in. Bear in mind the, the, the prophetic word that the Holy Spirit gave me uh, those many months after that 40 days and night fast, that one shovel full of resources from an undiscovered planet in an undiscovered galaxy could pay for the whole earth. Everything else is the unfathomable riches of Christ. That's the scale of what we, of what is ours. Now you, my invitation is self-coach. You don't have to engage me as a coach. It's all laid out step by step uh, on my website. There's a self-coaching guide for 12 months. Go to my website, georgenabaza.com forward slash crucible and fairness. Uh, one word, it is vitally important to work through this process diligently because it is the how to. So often we get knowledge, but we don't know how to do stuff. Is how to become fully functional sons of God in the earth. The days of a weak and ineffective gospel are over, and we have to assume ownership of the process of personal transformation metamorphosis because no one, not even our beloved preachers, will do it for us. We, we have to take ownership. We have to own the word. It's ours. It's right there. The Holy Spirit is with you, with all of us. And the only and, and, and the, the word of God is, is the truth that we stand for. It's time we 
dissociate ourselves from this humanistic uh, wisdom of motivation and philosophy that locks us into that which Adam fell into. Adam fell from being a spiritual man into a soulish man. Now we need to step out of that and step into the truth of who we are so that we can function as sons of God. And that's all we need to do, guys. Ask the Holy Spirit. That's all you need to do. How to unlock the unfathomable, unfathomable riches of Christ in our lives. Whatever it is that you, that you want. Remember, it's, it's these seven dimensions. It's, 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 it's a power. It's, it's riches. We all want riches. Wisdom. You know, it's, it's, it's might, it's just the, the might of God. It's a blessing, it's honor, it's glory. It's the fullness of the riches of Christ. The Holy Spirit will show you how to unlock these in the spheres of the matrix of your lives. Imagine how the quality of life on the earth would dramatically shift if sons of God can access these riches outside of the one shovel full of resources that the whole world is scrambling, scrambling all over. It's all there. We've been blessed with it in heavenly places. The unfathomable, well, <laughs> the unfathomable, okay. It's my 55th birthday, okay? I gotta slow down here. The unfathomable riches, <laughs> the unfathomable riches of Christ are not a theoretical spiritual truth that can only be accessed in the here after, after we die. They are tangible, they exist, they are the very essence of our kingdom, they are the very essence of the city of God, the Zion, the throne of God in which we inhabit, which we are. They are here right now, they are a present reality for sons of God with the mind of Christ, led by the Holy Spirit under the commands of the living word of God to press into and accept and make a reality in this earth. I describe uh, uh, this, the process in great detail when I talk about the seven spirits of God in the other trilogy. The mind of Christ crucible and furnace is the pathway to the full scale of the unfathomable rich, riches of Christ. Power, riches, wisdom, might, honor, glory, blessing. Now, this brief presentation, <laughs> my presentation to you on the unfathomable riches of Christ, I gotta get this right, it's my 55th birthday. This presentation on the unfathomable blue. <laughs> oh, my daughter is gonna laugh when she hears this. This presentation on the unfathomable riches of Christ. This presentation on the unfathomable riches of Christ. <laughs> I gotta move on. It's my 55th birthday free study resource offering to you called 855, the trilogy that structures my life. I got this impression from the spirit of God that I might just put it out there and tell you how my life is structured. I love the word, I love the Holy Spirit. I'm a craftsman of the word. Uh, I'm, just a, I'm just a guy, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't have any other training or skill except just studying the word of God and the Holy Spirit. And this is this trilogy, the throne of God, the unfathomable riches of Christ, the seven spirits of God that structure my life. It is directional and leads you into the complete suite of the mind of Christ, crucible and fairness coaching paradigm, uh, which was birthed by the Holy Spirit over this three year journey. That started with that 40 days a night fast. And we just finished the 14 days and 40 nights deep water fast as we, uh, uh, that's what we do. Now, the other two of the trilogy I've shared with you, the links are above or down here. I really encourage you to go through and read them. And if self-coaching is not the way you want to go and you want to engage me as your coach, hey, go on the website, uh, contact me and let's have a chat. My name is George. For those that don't know me, I really sincerely appreciate you spending time with me as, uh, as I celebrate my double five birthday. We'll catch up and talk again soon.